Thanks for that, guys. So welcome to another Hashtag Ash. We're actually up to episode 100. So this has been the 101 wow, of these. Wow. So it's been a really good experience. This is made in a podcast as well. And we're live from Training Week. So we'll get straight into it with the questions as well from the audience. And if you are watching online, please leave a comment and let us know you're there and we will get to it as well. I just want to talk about these cards real quickly. So everyone in training, you're going to get one of these digital cards tomorrow. So we've actually got this thing here and you want to show maybe how it works, Jim, with yours? Yeah, well, basically it's a card. I've got mine with my picture on the back too, which you can get your logo on it. <laughs> That's true. Um, and basically all you need to do is to, is to tap somebody's phone and it enters the information. Then you can, ask, they can, then they can just put create um, and it puts it in. Now, if it, some of the older iPhones like this one doesn't work on, you have to actually um, take a picture of this thing here. But what it does is it replaces the need for, for paper cards. We're just, we, we're just going to give you one so it doesn't cost you anything from now on. And you take the card and you just tap it on your client's phone and they've got your phone number in their phone, which is where you need it to be. So that it's, it's a great device. We, ju we, just, we just pay for them, we buy them for you, you get them out of training. Yeah, you'll get them tomorrow. You guys will be the first one to have them. There's a little manual with coming as well. So Jim's gone and done that when we saw that technology. So mm. you'll get that tomorrow. So the internet's are working on here. Yeah, listen, sorry, I do have to interrupt. I'm sorry. This is the first time we've done this. This is our 100th show as well. Yep. But we do have a birthday, and I need everyone to wish Joel a happy birthday. Oh, Joel. <laughs> Today? Yeah. Jo oh, my goodness. Joel. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday, dear Jolly. Oh, oh, Happy birthday to you. Hip hip. Hip hip. Hip hip. Congratulations, mate. 48. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you very much, Mike and Jake and Ben. That was a nice surprise. And thank you. You'll be getting a warning from me tomorrow as well, so it's all good. <laughs> Because I know you're fond of some birthdays as well, Jim, so I'm pretty much the same as well. So let's get into the questions here, guys. We've got 92 people watching online, which is fantastic. So make sure you leave your comments and questions in there. I will get to them as well as I can. I'm on my phone. This one is not working. We need Jim's IT. Okay, so where is Tim? Tim with the first one. Hey, yeah, Tim, which division are you going to be from, mate? Uh, dog wash. Dog wash, cool. Uh, Jim, how do you know which divisions will succeed? It's based on the leadership. There are so many divisions at gyms that would have massive numbers. And the ones that are doing well, the ones that are well led. Um, divisions like cleaning, all the clean divisions, dog wash, very good leadership, beauty inspections. You know, started from scratch, um, pulled started from scratch just, I don't know. 2011. 2011. Yep. You know, like 10 years ago, it's now the biggest of its kind in, in Australia. So you've got a good leader, that's the main thing. Yep. He's dog wash, so Sharon's his leader. Yes, Sharon yeah. is yours, leader, and she's, she's wonderful. She's rewritten the rule book on how to be a franchisor. Cool. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Good, Good luck with everything. Yeah. Cool. The next one here is it, is it Danny D or Danny D? Danny D? Yes. Hi, Jim. I'm from Hi, Security Division. Jim Security. Jim Security, cool. yep. Uh, my question is for you what is your favourite movie? What is your favourite movie? Oh, there's a few of them actually. I like Dances with Wolves for some reason. I always like that one. I just love the, 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 just the portrayal of the Indian life and, and, and the life on the prairie and stuff. I reckon um, the founder is also pretty good about Ray Kroc. All right. He's somebody I, I, I'm, well, I say identify with him. He's a lot richer than I ever would be, but still. Okay. Yeah, there's a few. All right. Did you have another one as well there? No, no. About divisions, new divisions coming on board? Sorry? Was it new divisions coming on board or was that someone else? No. Someone else, okay, cool. Thanks it's, for that there's one. There's good stuff around it. I love, I love uh, talking books actually. I'm, I'm um, listening to a talking book now about Instagram, which is really very interesting. And before that, one about Jennifer Doudna, who's the one people who invented CRISPR, the gene editing tool. So there's a lot of good stuff around. But I reckon talking books are fantastic because you can listen to them while you're exercising, while you're walking, while you're working, while you're driving. I, I love talking books. I think they're, they're great invention. I love, I love this thing here. This is just so good. Yeah. Thanks for that one there. And we've got one now from, where's Vanessa? Vanessa. <coughs> Which division are you going to be from, Vanessa? Car detail. Car detail. Cool. Yes. Um, I'm living close to the city. My goal would be to try and source more commercial work, bulk work, and I just want some ideas as the best way to approach that and deals I can offer them. Okay. You, after commercial work, You'll get some through the system, but not very much. We're a very strongly domestic brand. People tend to come to us when they don't know anybody else, which is typically domestic users. If you want commercial work, what you need to do is to do the hard yards yourself. You need to approach different businesses. 
Um, if you're in the beginning, you can offer freebies. If you're getting paid for work guarantee, you can get your franchise order pay for it, which is always a nice way to get in. Mm. But I get in there and just do some jobs and, and make people happy. You've got to knock on a lot of doors. Yeah. People do build commercial businesses in gyms, but it's not as easy as building a domestic one. Okay. Thank you. You like commercial work, do you? Why is that? What's the reason? Uh, well, I'd rather turn up to a job and say, here's four or five cars you can do and, and have a, you don't have to travel around so much to, to different homes. So, And I live near the city, so I thought that would be more convenient for me and I could make extra money or better money that way. Yeah, yeah sure. Why not? Good, good okay. thought. Thanks for that question there. So we've got a few coming in online now. So one real quickly from Belinda Hadley for you, Jim, which is if a franchisee sends a topic to advisory and requests that it goes to a vote to the franchisees, will this happen? As I believe topics that there is a clear difference of opinion should be voted by the franchisees. We, we tend to ask advice um, from advisory as to whether they put it forward. But if you've only got one franchisee asking for it, it's a bit much to run a referendum just on that basis alone. If there was multiple people asking it to be different. But we have had some things about social media, which is quite contentious right now. Yep. And some people want different kinds of rules to be in place. And mm, so we, we, advisory is a discussion group. It's, it's elected by franchisors. Um, and we just ask their advice on things. But uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I find that it's a difficult area, social media. Well, everything one thing's different. They've all got different opinions. So some divisions are allowed to do one thing and some divisions yeah. do a different so thing. You've got, so you've got some franchises doing certain things and other franchises you don't like they're doing certain things. So it's a very much of a... It's a hot topic. Yeah, a hot yeah. You, have, you have some divisions who allow some things and some divisions who don't and there where can be a bit of confusion as well. Yeah. The, the, the world's changing so fast right now with all this stuff that it's, it's hard to keep, get up with it. Absolutely. We've got another one here online. We've got another comment from um, Dharma, just, uh, Dharma Christensen saying, do you remember who advised you to design dog wash as a trailer and not as a van? We never thought of doing anything different, actually, right from the beginning. One of the problems with a van is that you can pull a trailer behind an ordinary car because they're not that heavy. But van, you've got, to, you've got to buy it and have it fitted out. So it's a lot, lot bigger expense. Mm. So th th I think there are dog wash vans around, but um, it's pretty unusual because it just takes the cost up too much. By the way, just going back to that previous topic, I would say that if, if there was a strong groundswell of support, like if a whole stack of franchisees started writing into how we want this particular change, we would put it to referendum. We just need a bit of reason to do it. We need some, some reason. Because a referendum is quite a big thing. You've got, you're asking you know, 4,000 plus franchisees to give a response. So we'd like to know that there's some genuine interest in a subject. What sort of number would it need? You reckon it would be like 20 franchisees or would it be? Oh, I think if, if, if eight or 10 franchisees were independently right in for the same idea, we'd definitely run that one. Mm. So if, if you did want to do something, you just have to get some support. It's a bit like franchise or vote out, which I talked about today. You know, you, you might have 50 franchisees in a region. One of them actually says, I want to vote out my franchise or. Well, I'd like a bit more evidence, guys, because it's a very big process and quite embarrassing and contentious. So if you can get a few of you to come to me and say, we've really got the same concerns, then, that, then I'd run a vote out. So you have to have a reason, because a referendum is quite a big thing. Mm. And thanks to everyone who's watching along. I've got 93 people, which is fantastic. And I've got no into my laptop still, so I'm just trying to do my best on the phone. And I'll get to a few questions on there as well in a minute. So we've got another one here from Troy. Where is Troy? Troy at the front there, cleaning group. Uh, yeah, car detailing. Car detailing as well, cool. Yep. Uh, Jim, you might want to answer this one online. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be the first time ever if I don't answer it, but, but far oh, away. Yeah. Remember, I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Is there truth in the rumour that it was you who pushed Dan Andrews down the stairs? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and I've got to admit, I had mixed feelings when I heard it happen. <laughs> <laughs> and just another quick one. I believe you're the father of ten children. That's true. That's true. Yes. Good work. Um, uh, any hey, the you know, populate or <laughs> perish. <laughs> you know, uh, Peter Costello, when he was treasurer, he came to, right. to our conference centre. And, uh, and, I, and I said, Peter, you said one for dad, one for mum, one for the country. Well, I've got one for mum, one for dad, eight for the country. That's, that. <laughs> That's right. Uh, any of the children in, uh, in the Jim's franchise? In the um, my daughter, Jasmine, actually. Not, they haven't got franchises as such. Yep. Um, my daughter Jasmine actually is, um, she's involved in the booking process here, but she's only just taken it over, so don't blame her for anything went wrong. She's wonderful, and I have hopes for her. Um, one of my sons is actually um, heading up a research project at La Trobe University into um, epigenetics and, and mental illness and so forth, which is a great mm. passion of mine. So apart from that, nobody's actually in the business, but 
Never you never know. know. Thank you. No, great. Well done. That's a great question there, Troy. We've got a few yeah. people leaving a lot of nice comments and stuff, which is fantastic. And a mod's going in. My mate Ramesh is in there in training, so he says, g'day, mate. Um, from Tassie there, which is fantastic. So if he's got a question here, we'll show him as well. We've got one more question here from Matthew Dwyer online, which is, Jim, I think when a franchisee gets five, 55 consecutive five-star ratings, they should get a Jim's Monopoly on the house. I'll email you my address. There'd be a lot of Monopolies we be sending out if that's the case, wouldn't there? Yes, mm. we get more and more five-star ratings mm. lately. I don't know people that, partly because you can undo a, fi a, a, a lower star rating by doing the job again or a freebie or whatever. So we do have more and more people that are getting vast numbers. I don't know how many monopoly sets we've actually got, but. Uh. We have a few, but what we can do, Matthew, is um, we try and get franchise resource to give us a photo of yourself and a bit of a background and we can then share something online. That's a good thing with the uh, mm. community as well. We've done it a few times before. The Belinda Hadley in rebuttal before to the advisory stuff, Jim has gone, how is it fair though when advisory has so many representatives from one division making it unfair from Belinda? <coughs> Um, well, to a certain extent, it's a matter of who stands for it. Mm. I don't think advisory is, is um, particularly biased in terms of franchise numbers. How many mine people do we have on advisory? There's only about three. Ben, there's Ben, Peter, and who's the third? I don't know. So actually, mowing is not overrepresented by that much, considering the number of franchisees. Mm. But to a large extent, it's a matter of who volunteers for it. Honestly, I, I'd, I'd love to say it was competitive, but it's not really. Most of the people who, who volunteer get on. Even if it's only like an hour every, th every quarter, or a couple of hours every quarter by Zoom these days, it's not a big thing, but it has a very big amount of influence on Jim's group. Mm. So I'd say if, you, if, if Belinda, if you want to... Uh, be on it. Be, why don't yeah. you be on it? Present somebody or something. Well, she's up in Queensland, so we need more people from Queensland yeah. on there, so why not? Absolutely. <laughs> So what I'll do is we got, we've also got a um, questions here submitted by people. We have a website called Ask Jim, so you can put in a question via there. And we had one from this young man. He said, Jim said he'd answer, which would be kind of slow. He goes, hey, Jim, how did you become such an Aussie icon? And how do you feel about random Australian teens thinking you're a god? <laughs> which, is what he's, which is what he's right here. Yes, <laughs> very strange. I actually think, look, look the, the deity thing's a bit of a problem as a practicing church god, but, but all the same, um, I think it's a good role model in a way because people have this idea that you've got to go to university and do some sort of a course and sit in front of a computer all day and so forth. And I don't think, I think people have got to realise there's another form of life out there. Our people do pretty well on the whole. Most, most of our franchisees earn at least average income and often a lot more. Um, there's people who've got all kinds of degrees and so forth like that who've come and actually found that they're much better off washing dogs on mowing lawns than, than in, in more, you know, normal things. So I think it's actually for teens to actually have a look at a model of somebody who's actually done okay in life by doing the physical work is, is, is a good, yeah, I think it's a good model. Well, do you think the narratives in school should change then? Because it's not obviously the narrative that's pushed yeah, really, is it? I think so too. People should talk more about, about business as an opportunity. It's such a good thing. Look, I talk to my veterans, like the 10 years, I'm going to be ringing tonight, we're ringing people who've been 10, 15 on those major anniversaries. And one of the things I ask about is a lot of people have got very, good backgrounds, a lot of them are like corporate backgrounds, management, all kinds of things, done very well and they just love what they're doing because they say they get the same money or better and they've got flexibility, they've got lifestyle, they can work when they want to, they see their kids, there's all those kinds of advantages. I think it's, there's this, there's this prejudice, this bias in favour of what, you know we put a job in for a basic, somebody in accounts paying $45,000 a year and you get a hundred applicants, half of them with degrees. I mean, what, what are people doing? All this expensive, extensive university education, you know, law degrees and stuff like to mention something completely useless. You know, there's more law students in Australia than there are lawyers. So, so many people are getting these degrees and things, spending years and tens of thousands of dollars of their lives. And they could be out there washing dogs and cleaning and mowing lawns and pest control and all these kind of things too, and having a much better lifestyle and making probably as good or better money. That's what I did, Jim. I did a law degree. I know, I was actually <laughs> aware of this when I pointed it at you. <laughs> exactly, so we've got a few more comments and questions online, so I want to get some to keep them engaged. So we've got one here from, um, here we go, Jason Pox says, congratulations on near 10K followers on the Jim's group TikTok. I don't know if anyone uses TikTok, but Jim had a bit of a viral video when you were destroying Blackberries with the Palink. Yeah. I think it's had around 122,000 plays, which is pretty cool. It's quite fun, actually. It, it was really quite fun. A bit, a bit of a buzz. But it really worked very well, actually. I, I, just, I had to go and borrow some. I went to my neighbour and I said, um, I said, Andrew, can, can I borrow some blackberries from you? And he said, yeah, all right, if you can find them. And I said, there's plenty in the back of mm, your yard next to our house. So stay tuned to the Instagram and we'll put that on there as well on the Facebook page if you don't have TikTok. So we've got one here from the audience, which is from Murray. Is it Murray? Oh, yep. Cool. 
What division, Murray? Is it dog wash? Dog washing. Cool. Yeah. Um, thanks for having me. And uh, my question is, did you ever see yourself getting to where you are today when you mowed your first yard? Oh, absolutely not. No possible way. I thought mowing lawns was just a thing to do in desperation <laughs> while I, <laughs> I worked out what to do with my life properly after my whole academic career fell. fell the hole. As, as some of you know, I actually aimed to be an academic. I, I did a PhD in history of all useless things. <laughs> I ended up mowing lawns because that was my student job and it's the only way I knew to make a living. So I had no conception. Even when I started the franchise, to be honest, when somebody said to me at the beginning, how many franchisees do you think you might have? I said, look, if it really works well, I might one day one have 100. <laughs> you know, we've, we've, yeah. we've grown more than 100 in the past month, so it's kind of so far beyond what I could have anticipated. And I never expected it to be in like a, like a, a household name. That was really bizarre. You, you just don't even think about such things. Yeah, well, I, re I remember Jim's when I was a kid. When I was like five years old, I remember the ads. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was, it, it's, it's been a surreal experience in a lot of ways. You just don't, look, I, when I started off, I, I really didn't have any numbers in mind. I mean, somebody asked me that question, I thought I might have 100. But really, basically all I had was, was an idea that I was going to make franchisees happy. That was my concept. I said, what can you do to design a system that franchisees would like to be in, that would see advantages, that would all these protections, everything else? That was the concept. It wasn't anything to do with numbers or growth or becoming a millionaire or anything. There was nothing in there. I just thought, how can I make franchises happy? What can I do? And then I can keep on trying to do something to make it work better. And it's just surprising what comes out of these things. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Murray. Got another one here from one of our prospects here, which is Brenda. Where is Brenda? Brenda's still here? I can read it out for you, Brenda. Oh, he's done it to you again. He's done the old Brenda to Brenda. We had this last time. We had this last time with the Brenda. And I, Brenda, a, come a, on. You don't like Brenda at all. He's still trying to get me back. Uh, <laughs> oh, <shit>. Brenda. <laughs> oh, my no. goodness. If you do have a franchise idea, uh, where do you send it? And do you look at them all? Yes. Um, I look at them all, but I don't actually franchise ideas. I franchise businesses. So if you, for example, have a business that you've run in the past that was successful, like, as an example, Jumping Castles, which is just about a recent start. Now, what happened to people who actually contacted me about that, and they've been running this business for quite some time, and what they said is, this is what it's going to cost to get your equipment, and it's surprisingly cheap, actually. The, the, all the, the, the castles look expensive, but they're not, they don't cost very much. And this is what you need to do. This is the equipment you need. This is the kind of things you're going to run. This is how much you can charge. This is how much you can make over the weekend. This is how you promote it. And they gave me all this information about what they were doing. And they had about a successful business. So on that basis, we said, yes, let's do it. Right. But um, I'm actually very open. Jim at jims.net, basically anybody can have that email address. And I, and I get all kinds of stuff. And most of it's just marketing stuff and doesn't take my attention. But if anybody's got an idea, I'm, I'm very easy to reach. And most, most new divisions start that way. Somebody just emails me and, and don't even expect a response. And I just say, yeah, yeah talk. Thanks for that one. Cheers. Brendan, thank you. And we've got yeah, Sean Daly said the same thing online. Still keen to start a gym scaffold. I asked this months ago, so same thing, Sean. You're going to be a scaffolding business and then come to gym and yes. away you go. Cool. It's a more difficult one than most because it's a commercially oriented one and we have a very strong hold on the domestic market. We do very well with businesses like mowing, cleaning, dog wash, antennas, fencing, all those domestically oriented businesses. That's why we're talking about commercial cl clients before. It's, it's not as easy to get commercial clients because you have to directly approach them. Whereas our model mostly just reminds you you've got to sit there and just put, turn your phone on and start taking leads. Mm. The one here from Belinda Hadley again online, she says, are we then allowed to email franchisees asking if they have the same opinion as we do? Yes, as of course. A, as a lot of your franchisees have been told they're not allowed, but are still not aware they allow allowed to social media If there's platform. a significant groundswell of support for any change at all, and quite frankly, I'm pretty agnostic about things like social media because I don't, really, I don't use social media myself. He, he, he operates my social media. That's correct. Me. Don't tell anyone, though. No. <laughs> you're, you're applying to them all. You're Don't tell anybody. All. You're applying to them all. <laughs> yeah, on my behalf, yeah. I don't think I should go. I should have a look at Twitter, actually. I don't know if I'd like to make 10 tweets yeah. out. Twitter? You can tell me what to put on post it for. It's easy. Oh, I'd like to do it myself. Yeah, OK. And we'll give you a go at Twitter. I've been doing this book on Instagram, actually, which is really yeah. interesting. And I thought maybe Twitter would suit me. Twitter would suit, Twitter, Twitter's for personalities. So Twitter's for like you follow brands, celebrities and personalities. So you can give that a go. Yeah, well, I have a lot of really weird ideas. So that'll keep people getting angry and upset <laughs> and all the rest of it. So <laughs> well, if you go, well, go for it. We'll give, we'll give you the access and you can do it. No problem at all. Twitter would be a good one, actually, for you. 
Yeah, I think so. Yeah. We have Dean Chalor says, my gym, my son is joining Jim's family and I only have two kids, which is fantastic. So Dean wow. Chalor is a long-term franchise. Yes, I know. We just, I just approved that today. And we've got John Formosa saying, hope my free franchisees in training have enjoyed their first day. Steve Labosco, Sean Brennan and Glenn Bird. And Belinda Hadley says, can I volunteer for the advisory? The answer is yes, you can. I, do we have somebody for Queensland right now? Uh, we do have a representative for Queensland. We do, but I don't know if it's. I don't know if, I don't know if they're based in Queensland. I think they're maybe Victorian representing Queensland. So, yeah, Belinda, happy to have you on. Just just to have a look at it and, and come on. It's not a big investment of time. It used to be you had to fly down here, but these days mm. with Zoom, it's really quite simple, and the meetings don't even take that long. Advisory is very influential in gyms. Um, if you listen to that, and, and we always send out the. Um, the notes afterwards, which I take the notes and we just send them out. But uh, you know, almost think it was the board of directors of gyms group, but it just represents people within gyms, particularly franchisors and divisionals mm. who have ideas. And, and, and you know, as I said, if you want to change anything, it has to go to referendum, like like a, the franchisor manual, any changes that has to go to referendum and the franchisee manual too, as of the last couple of years. Mm. So it's, it's, it's a very consultative process. But look, Belinda, if you've got some, ideas you want to put on and you want to push them forward, by all means, come forward. Um, in that area, I'm quite happy to do what the majority want. Mm. We're no one here from the people here, which is fantastic. This, I like this question. Where is Richard? Richard obviously follows our socials, which is a good one. So as he's coming up here. Yeah, you'd be good on Twitter, Jim. Give he's got the right beard, this guy, too. <laughs> <laughs> What's more like Jim than I do? What division are you going to be, Richard? Uh, dog wash. Dog wash. Hey, good day, Jim. How are you? Um, my qu I just want to say uh, you're very inspirational. Um, I left school at a young age and I didn't have a lot of education and um, always worked in factory jobs and just jobs that were going nowhere. And now I've got this opportunity to start a business with my, with my wife and family. And um, yeah, I think we're going to go great, you know, and just having that opportunity is, is, you know, has is, is changed our life. And, um, but my question is, um, how do I become a pilot for Jim's Air? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> as I said to people who saw that, you should look at when it was sent out. It was April the 1st. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a few people were taken in by that one, yes. Oh, I got so a call from a, a friend of mine at News Corp. And uh, he, as he said, he, 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 I said, I said, Anthony, what day is it? And he said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh said, yeah, right. So it was not fair dinkum then. No, nah, it wasn't fair dinkum. No, right. Because a lot of people didn't know and a lot of, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, well. Well, I'll tell you something. I'm a lot less rich, risk, rich than I'm, I'm supported to be. You know, they wanted to put me down for the rich two, 250 or something like that. And I said, oh, rich 500. And you said, you've got to be joking. I'm not even in the same order of magnitude. <laughs> oh, if it ever does happen, though, I'll put my hand up to be a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be more than a three-day generic training course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, you know, do you know what they say, though, and I've said this many times, that the best way to make a small fortune in the airline business, start with a large fortune. I'll stick to what I know, which is... <laughs> we're pretty good at that. Other things... Uh, All right, thank you. Thank we, you. Had, we had a heap of people reaching out on LinkedIn going, I know this might not be a joke, Jim, but we can do it, we can do it. So it's quite... um. Yeah, uh, it was right, right on the edge. So next year's go, hopefully we can do a bit better. That one was pretty good, that one, though, but we'll see next year how we can do. I don't know. Look, if somebody came to me, like the, the Richard Branson thing, and said to me, I want to do Jim's Air, and they had the right background in the industry, we might have a talk to, to them about it, but it had to be, I wouldn't put up the money for it, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't have that kind of, I don't have that kind of money in my, in my wallet, I'm afraid. <laughs> so we've got a few questions coming online. So James Hart's gone here, what is the classified as the average income? So if someone's asking about average income of franchisees. Ah... Uh, we don't really know because we don't ask, but we think most franchises make about a couple of grand a week. Which, relying for costs and stuff and, and tax advantages, is, is somewhat above average income. Mm. Look, I don't, I think personally quite hard to understand how people make less than that because when I was mowing lawns back in the in the seventies and eighties, um, I would typically mow twelve lawns a day. Well, the, the typical lawn these days is like sixty bucks. So on that basis, you, you should be able to make in a five-day week without working extraordinary hours. You should make about three and a half grand, and then, and you can do more if you do extras and things like you clean out gutters and stuff. You can make 120 bucks for a job that takes you three quarters of an hour. 
So I, I'm not quite sure I understand why the average, but that's the feedback I generally get. Around about $2,000 a week is pretty commonplace. Mm. Then Paz has gone here. After mowing, what's the most grown franchise with Jim's, from Jim's Real Estate, Paz? The most growing yeah, one? Yeah, that's the most grown franchise with Jim's. The, oh, the, the largest would be cleaning. Mm. Cleaning is a cleaning division as a whole, which is which is all the car cleaning and everything else is approaching a thousand, mm. um, which they're very excited about. <laughs> so are Absolutely. we. Um, fast growing actually divisions like dog wash are actually growing a lot faster. Fencing's picked up again too. Fencing's doing very well lately. Yeah. Yes, we've got a new system of training in place. We've got some fences here. I know we had I talked to a couple before, which is good. Absolutely. Then we've got one here from Jade. Where is Jade? Jade's got the question. <laughs> this is pretty pretty relevant to everyone here. Oh, this is the lady who's going to ask this <laughs> curly question. She was telling me at dinner time. Now I'll see no, what... it's a good one. <laughs> All right, okay. Um, just wanted to know what the best advice you could give someone starting out as a franchisee would be. And what division are going to be from, Jade? A dog wash. Dog wash. Oh, Another yeah. dog wash. I think it's four dog wash in a row. <laughs> Every day, look at your business and say, what can I do better? That is the one thing, never be satisfied. Never be satisfied with the quality of service, never be satisfied with efficiency, never be, always try and prove what you do. It's the one biggest thing. It doesn't matter where you start from, Jade. Honestly, it doesn't. It doesn't matter whether you're super good at your job, it doesn't matter whether you're, whether you're incredibly intelligent or good looking or, or educated or anything, that doesn't matter. The one thing that matters is you keep on improving because if you keep on getting better, no matter where you start from, you'll eventually just do better and better and better and better. And, and I kind of, in a sense, find it very hard to understand how people want to do that. Because I'm amazed people will work so hard. They'll work long hours. They'll work 40, even 50 hours a week just doing hard manual work. But they won't spend five minutes thinking. And when I was mowing lawns, I was actually, all the time I was thinking every day, how can I do this job better? How can I do it quicker? How can I get a better job? How can I use my brush cutter? How can I delight the client better? How can I cut time traveling between jobs? How can I, how can I cut the grass more efficiently? How can I make a cleaner job? What extra jobs can I do? I just kept on asking myself that question. I still ask myself the same question every day now. How can I do it better? And if you start it with that kind of attitude and come to meetings, <laughs> talk to your I fellow. Will, I swear. <laughs> you will. Good. <laughs> yep. Yep. I've got to ask. <laughs> if you contact me, come to meetings. Talk to your fellow franchisees. You'll find there are people there who are really, really, really keen to help you. And that's that's I can say that with greatest confidence. You'll find people in your region who will just like, love nothing better than to put you out of their wing and say, "Come on, Jade, do it this way. I'm making this much money. How much can you make? How long is it taking you to do a standard dog? What could you do to improve on that?" What extras can you give? Why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? And you talk to them and people will inspire you and you'll see, well, hang on a bit. If they're making $4,000 a week, why can't I? Mm. That's, that's the one thing. Thank you. Good, Good question. You. Thank Good you. Good question. We've got one here now from Mille. Mille? Oh. Good evening, everyone. Yeah. Hi, Jim. Hi, Mille. Mille from Antennas. I'm taking Antennas, um, Jim's Antennas. Probably it's a bit of personal question too. What car do you drive and how old is it? <laughs> <laughs> I drive a Mitsubishi, what are they called? It's an Outlander or 360 something? Outlander or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like an old hatchbacky type thing, isn't it? Or? I think it's about 12 years old. It's probably worth about 500 bucks. Oh, thanks very much <laughs> for that. And second part it gets a lot of rough use actually, it really does. I take it back and forth from my farm and I put wood and stuff in it and take it over. It's not, it's not a really nice car, actually. It wouldn't impress any girl of you. But <laughs> fortunately, I've been married for 20 years, and my wife, actually, she prefers me to drive her car, so I'll do that for her. Sake, but Thanks very much, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for that one, Milo. You know, one of the things about, it's interesting, there's a, there's a wonderful book called The Millionaire Next Door, and it's about what a typical million, American millionaire is like, and in Australia, it'd be very similar. Now, you would think that a typical American millionaire is like a tech guru or a corporate manager or something like that, but it's actually not true. There are actually people like me and successful franchises and franchises in Jim's group. Very typically people who have trade type, service type businesses and grow those businesses successfully. That is the typical a million, millionaire. You, you wouldn't think so, but it's, but it's true. And one of the advantages that we have is because we don't need to go out and, and have fancy suits and cars and stuff to impress people. We, we actually tend to reinvest our money and, 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 and make more money out of it. So it's, it's the ability to make good money without the, without the pressure to, to spend. 
and we live a pretty ordinary lifestyle. You know, my wife cooks most nights, and, and we, if we go out, we go to a pizza restaurant, and you know, we might spend 60 bucks for the family, drive an old car. Um, but my clothes from Kmart, basically, well, the shirts we got ordered specially because they're uniform, but I just don't spend a lot of money. And I, I think that's, I think, yeah. I, I like to invest my money. I like to do something useful with it, particularly in my research project. But I don't like to spend them personally. One day I'd love to have an electric car, though. I really would. I love electric, I love electric stuff. What's the price point, though, for you to get down to the buy one? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> when they come down to about 25, 30 grand, when they're, when they're more equivalent to an ordinary... Com I'm not going to... Spend, I mean, Teslas are nice, but who's going to spend 70 grand on a car, for heaven's sake? Cyber truck. Mm. What? <laughs> nice Cybertruck. The Cybertruck. You know the Cybertruck? Did you see the Cybertruck thing, like the triangle-looking thing? No. Have you seen that one? Oh. I have to send you the video of it. I'll send you the video of it with the test. I am notoriously stingy, actually. <laughs> I really am. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I have arguments with my family because I, when I go into, I always buy the, you know, the, the, you go into Woolworths, you get the, the $1 bottle of detergent. I always buy the cheap stuff. And my wife says, you should buy the more expensive stuff. I say, no, no, this is all we need. This is good enough. This stuff is fine. And, and, and I do the most of the washing up anyway, so it's not really, really my business. You're a big fan of the black and gold and the home brands, aren't you? you like I, love, yeah. I love home brand stuff. You know, they did, they, did a, they did a test, a blind wine tasting test. I love this story of all these expensive wines about and they got people to taste them without knowing what they were and you know what won the wine contest six dollar bottle from coles <laughs> <laughs> i love that story because people just do it for snob value and i think that's a terrible way to spend money i think mean, there's lots of good things to do with money like getting your house cleaned or your lawns mowed or your dog washed that's <laughs> people should be spending money on that kind of stuff not on stupid status things <laughs> We've got some more questions and comments online, so thanks for leaving my live trumpet for a few real quickly. Billy Boardshorts has gone, what a name. Can there be too many franchisees servicing one area and would that impact how much work each can get? Well, question. actually, it's kind of the opposite, Billy, because strange as it may seem, look, if you had an area and you put a lot of people on straight away without much advertising, yes, you could have some problems. But in general, there's a pretty simple rule. The more franchisees in an area, the more work per franchisee. And one of the reasons that you can look at this is you look at television advertising. Now, we don't do it these days, but in the past there was a, there was a saying about television, you never, ever, ever put one ad on television. Why not? Because it has no repetition value. What you do is you put repeated ads, even if it's on a, a, a poor timescale. Why? Because you get repeat, 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 repeat. And when people see things, six repeats is better than, more than six times as valuable as one, as one time. That's how people think. They see it again and again. Well, that's what tends to happen when you've got multiple franchises in an area. It becomes, people just see Jim's dog wash driving all over the place. They just see one, they see it. And so when they want to get their dog wash, it's top of mind. So in actual fact, it's good. Like back in the, back in the um, there was a time back in the early 90s when we had like 50 franchisees in mowing in Melbourne. And the franchisees came to me at that time and said, look, Jim, now we're at saturation point. We've really got enough, you know, we really can't put any more franchises in because we, we, we've really got 50. That's so many in, the, in a city the size of Melbourne. And at that time, it wasn't that easy to find work. You know, we had to have campuses knocking on doors, all kinds of things. We've now got probably 500 mowing franchisees in, in Melbourne. And we, we have to turn off the, the advertising because we can't, we can't do it. There's too much work around. Why? Because 10 times as many franchisees produces a lot more than 10 times as much work. Mm. Now, good question with Billy there. And Denise Taylor's gone, welcome to Sam and Justin Page who bought a split of us and now own Jim's Cleaning Glasshouse Mountains first day tomorrow. So excited. So Denise, they started during COVID in March and they put on four people and they've already sold a split. So yeah. they're the type of people I'm talking about. So thanks for letting us know that as well, Denise. Then Nathan's gone, where can I buy the Monopoly from? You can buy it from jims.net. We have a shop on there. So I'll get back to a few more questions as well here. Uh, we have RP. Where's RP? Is it RP? Unless I'm pronouncing it wrong. <coughs> Now, this is another lady at dinner who was going to ask some really curly questions, <laughs> so I'm, I'm watching you as well. Uh, from cleaning group, Harvey, or which division? Uh, I'm sorry? Which division will you be doing? Uh, cleaning. Cleaning. Uh, from Adelaide. Cool. If you are not here doing the business, what is a typical Jim Penman's day? What do you do? Do you still mow your lawn? <laughs> Actually, my biggest activity outside of gyms would be working on my farm. I've got a small farm and I go up there and I, I've, I've got big fields of potatoes and stuff. Where I'm, I'm digging out the beds for planting trees and making it into a sort of food forest. So basically, 
physical work outside farming is my, my major hobby, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, what I often say to people is that you do what you love. People often ask me, which division should I go in for? And I say, what do you enjoy doing? And the reason that I went to the mowing lawns is because I really love doing physical work outside. I just enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And it's very good for your mood. So that's why I was successful as the contractor. So I still do it now. I don't actually mow lawns, but yeah, I do yeah. actually work outside physically. And it's really good. Keeps me healthy and fit and young. I turn 69 next month and I feel, I feel like I'm 30. I honestly do. Yeah. Thank you so much. I look, I look <laughs> like I'm 100, but I feel like I'm 30. <laughs> We, we do have a video online though, which is the day in life of Jim, where we followed you from I think 7 a.m. or 6 a.m. and then we followed you around for the whole day. Yeah, I play with well, squash so. and running on a treadmill and all kinds of things it's like good that. Good watch. It's got it's got a few views, so give that a watch as well. Got to keep active. That's the great thing about what well, what we do is we actually have jobs where we keep us physically active. It's a much healthier way. You know the thing. I know I'm being a bit biased here, but you know the two professions with the highest level of satisfaction according to surveys, one is gardeners and the other is florists. Lawyers come down about the bottom. So. <laughs> That's true. But you're not a lawyer anyway. Oh, no, so I'm not, never going to be, never going to be. So I've got one here from Jill, which I'm going to ask on her behalf, who's in the audience. And Jill's got, how many regions do you still manage? And also, how many regions do you still have? It's a good question. Um, I don't know about how many regions, because it depends on how you gather them up. But we're actually buying back regions as they become available, because we find that it works very well. Like Rachel, is Rachel here? Rachel yeah, yeah she, okay. she actually handles a lot of the franchisees in dog watch regions that we've bought back and we own. Because I put somebody like, Rachel does a wonderful job, Sharon manages the sales, and we find it's a very successful business model. So, as to, I don't know how many franchisees we've probably got, we've probably got about four or five hundred franchisees 500 directly. Yeah. All of which could vote me out if they aren't ha happy with <laughs> me, so it's, it's actually a, a good arrangement. But, uh, you know, we look after them well. I think it's a good, good model. And we, and we usually get franchisors to existing franchisors to do the, the support work. And that, that works very, very well. Now, thanks for those questions, Jill. We've got a few more online comments. Jim's Blind Clean Repairs has gone. Hi, Jim and Joel. One of the most crowded franchisee trainings this week. What is the lineup like per division at this training? We obviously know from dog wash, there's a lot of dog washing in here. I think, I think somebody said Clean's got about 30 in training. Is that 32. Right? 32, 32 hate in training. Yeah. I think mowing's got about 15, somebody said. So Clean Group's doubled mowing for, okay. Yeah. Oh. That's oh. <laughs> Okay. Well, it's good for cleaning. <laughs> it's good for cleaning. <laughs> but mowing, pull your socks up, people. <laughs> and we've got Jason Pollock says, that's an awesome story. It's always nice to hear stories like that. I wish him great success, to re uh, relevant to the gentleman before. So thanks for letting us know that as well. And a few people saying they knew it was a joke with Jim's there, but a lot of people didn't as well. So we've got another question here from, um, where is it? Is it Danny or Danny D? I think this is the one about the new division. New division's coming on board. No, Mike spells it. Is that... Danny D, how do you read that? Jenny? Jenny D. What new divisions are coming on board? Who asked that question? Oh, disappeared. It's a phantom. All right. Well, I can still answer it. Yeah, absolutely. Even if they disappeared. For sure, we um, find new divisions. Well, as I said, the, the, the newest division that we've got started would be uh, Jumping Castles. Jumping Castles and Party High, there's actually three. Laundry Services. Oh, Laundry Services coming on too, yeah. And there's yeah. Poo Patrol. Poo Patrol, yeah. But one of the good things about it is that all these appeal to different demographics. Like um, jumping castles is one that people can do at the weekend. You can do it during the week as well, but it's a good one. It's good for a family. See, a friend of mine in, in, my, in my church group has, um, he was asking me the other day, you know, what could I do after I retire in three years? And he's got his wife and his daughters would like to get involved too. And I said, what about jumping castles? It's a great business. They're very they're nice people. They're, they're good people people. So I said, that's a good one. Um, Laundry is going to be good because it's something that women can do and it's a low cost, low entry cost. And the same thing with Poo Patrol too. And men can do laundry as well. They can. Yeah. But we like to appeal to different demographics and these are relatively low cost, easy ones to get into. And, and so therefore, so there's three potentially very good divisions. Well, I think the um, Jumping Castle and Party Side is our first part-time division. Mm. So the thing is, if you can have a full-time job, but if you want to do it on the weekend, you can still make... That's what's sort of designed as well. Well, from what the figures they gave us, they, they can make, you know, three, three and a half thousand dollars in a weekend mm. for doing something that's not very arduous. Um, so it, 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 it looks a very good business if you can do that as a part-time business. And then, of course, if you want to extend it to full-time later, you can, but at least it's, it's, it's keeping your income going in the meantime. And Jim's tested out the equipment before, which you can watch online. I think it's at 100,000, that one on TikTok, with you jumping up and down. And people were fascinated by your socks for some reason. I don't know why they were fascinated by you jumping on there in socks. I don't know why. 
the young kids were just... What's strange about my socks? I've got no idea. This You're jumping on... I don't know what was wrong with your socks. <laughs> but they were saying stuff about your socks online, the young kids. I have no, I no idea, idea what's wrong with my socks. They're just grey socks. They're Kmart socks. Yeah, what's I wrong with them? <laughs> like everything else that I get... They're like, yeah, they're like, OMG, can't believe you're jumping in socks, all this sort of stuff, the young people say. It was... Uh, what am I supposed to wear? Oh, I've got no idea. It's just for, just for the feedback for the young people there on there. So we've got a few more questions here as well from online. Uh, so we've got one here, which I'll go to line. Rocky's saying he could get you a sponsor for a free electric car, you reckon? So Rocky's our mowing divisional manager. He reckons he get a sponsor for your electric car. Really? So, yeah, what's what he's saying? So he's put it on riding there, so... I'll hold you to that, Rocky. I'll get you a sponsor for an electric car. I don't mind. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to buy one. If anyone wants to give no, me no, one... No, 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 We'll try and give... We'll try no, and see I, we one. could give them some good publicity, actually. That's one... one Absolutely. Well, I don't mind. I love the idea of electric. I really do. Because um, electric things are very... I've, we've tried using electric um, equipment, like... like um, Ego. The mowers and That's stuff. Fine. Ego and stuff like that. And, and Pelink. And they're, they're so nice and quiet. They don't vibrate. I, I love, I love battery-powered stuff. Because um, I don't like the noise of these things. You can put earmuffs on, but they are very noisy. Mm. And, and it's also good too when, you, when, you, when you're driving an electric mower, a battery powered mower, you go over some gravel or something, you just take your hand off it and, all, and, the, and the blade stops spinning. And you want to start it again, it's so easy, you just, don't, you just press it. It's, I love electric stuff. And also I've got, um, I've got my farm is actually fully powered. It actually, it actually makes a surplus of electricity from the solar panels and we're putting in hydro. My house has now got, um, we cover our own electricity costs and we're going to do the same thing here. This whole place is going to be carbon neutral within, within six months. The, the basics of the system is done by Jim's Energy down at the bottom there if anyone wants to have a look at it. Mm. So I love electric stuff. I reckon it's really great and, and I think it's the way of the future. Well, Rocky reckons you get Tesla now, so we'll see what we can do. I would be sceptical, <laughs> but I'm happy to take it if they give it to me. <laughs> then we have Eduardo. Eduardo, he's gone, Jim, the biggest suggestion you could give to a guy jumping on your team as a mowing franchisee. Thanks from Eduardo. What's the biggest suggestion? Yeah, what's the biggest suggestion? Ah, just give? the same as I said to Jay before. Just look at what you do and try and improve it. It's e very little business matters except for just this attitude of how can I improve what I do. The franchisees who fail tend to be the ones that say, I'm doing nothing wrong. Everything that's going wrong is the fault of the system, it's the fault of the clients, it's the fault of Jim, it's the fault of my franchisor, it's the fault of anybody but myself. I'm not going to change anything. They're the ones that we tend to fail. We have a word for them in gyms and it's not very polite. We call them leads. And we have gold and silver and bronze. Gold and silver are fantastic, great business. Bronze can be successful, but a lead just won't move. Mm. So if you've got somebody who has the attitude, character matters more than anything. You know, people, people worry too much about education. Education actually doesn't have a lot of effect except what they call a sheepskin effect. There's a wonderful book called The Case Against Education, which I just listened to. I love, as I said, I listen, love talking books. And it actually showed that the only real value of an education for, the, for most divisions, so some things like to be a doctor, you need it. The, the real value is that it gives the, an employer an idea that you can actually, you spent three years doing a course, so you must have a certain amount of ability, okay? It's just a sign. Education as such, for the most part, has very little effect on success. Intelligence doesn't think, people, people are so hung up on, on intelligence. You know, they reckon at the most, it, it, it determines about 4% of your success in life. So where you come from, your education, your brains, your stamina, your looks and stuff, all these matters very little. There's one thing that matters more than anything, and that's character. And the character that says, what can I do better? Mm. No matter what you do, if you've got that attitude and you can do it. And, we, and in gyms, you're in a wonderful situation for that because you've got people all around you who are trying to give you ideas about how to do better. You're not out by yourself. You've got, you've got people who are doing, making twice what you're making. And when you start working and you go to meetings, You'll, you'll be talking to people who are making twice or three times what you'll be making initially. I promise you that, if you're division, regions of any size at all. And they'll be eager to tell you what they're doing and how they're doing it. All you have to do is to listen and say, OK, let me try this, let me try that. Let's do this. Let's work out how to do this better. Hmm. And, and there is no upper limit. And then whether, you're, whether your aim is to become wealthy or just to have an incredible lifestyle, you know, one guy was talking, one of the 10-year veterans I was talking to in Queensland. Now, he doesn't make any better money than he made in his previous job. He was quite open about that. But you know what? He works four days a week and knocks off at one o'clock every day, Monday to Thursday. That's his life. And he has workers 
and he goes to an area, he has this great business where he goes into a street and has several jobs. So he only works very limited hours. He doesn't like working in the heat. He just works until one o'clock, four days a week. And he makes very good money, enough to completely cover his needs. And that, to me, is successful. Mm. But that's based on somebody who goes into his business and says, how can I do it better? And he's got this great business model. Mm. We've got one here from online from Preet saying, Mike is the best trainer. So it's a nice little pump up from Mike there as well. We've got a few more here from the audience. So we've got one for, is it from Gunjan? Gunjan? Yep. Sorry, I probably mispronounced your name wrong. Hello, Jim. <coughs> I'm from Jim's IT. Um, Jim's IT. Jim's oh, Jim's oh, yes, IT. yes, that's right. Cool. Um, actually, um, I just wanted to say this, and I, I think every, everyone will agree. I guess we, you're very humble, and um, it's great that you come and sit with us. And uh, Well, actually, if you ask my wife, but she'll say, Jim, you've got a lot to be humble about, so that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, my question is, how do you grow your business beyond a single operator? And when you do, when you have employees, how do you maintain that quality that you are going to give your customers, that your employees give to the customers too? Okay. The, the, I'll tell you something. The biggest problem you're going to have on the whole is not finding work. Most divisions, most franchisees quickly get as much work as they can handle. The problem you're going to have is finding a worker who can do the job properly. And that's not easy. And then when you've got somebody who's got the right character, and that may, you might need to try five, six, ten different people to get somebody good. You look after them well, and then you train them in your method, and you have them working alongside you. And I don't know how quite whether IT is probably the ideal uh, business for this one. Um, there's a lot of other divisions like fencing and mowing that are a lot easier to do this because of the sheer volume of work that comes through. But <coughs> you've got somebody working alongside you for a while. They've learnt your methods. You get to the stage where you can give them more and more flexibility. Then after a time you say to them, okay, what about going out separately? What about running a team for me? How would you like to do that? Here's some customers, you already know them. You've got confidence in their work. They put somebody on, you put somebody else on. That's more or less how it operates. You work with somebody intensively with you personally until they go good. It takes time, it takes effort. You're going to have to spend a lot of time finding the right people. There are also people, as I said in other areas, who are doing this kind of thing. And we'll put you onto them. So we'll find you people who've got workers and they'll show you what they do and how they go about it. And they'll be, they'll be delighted to share. People like John and Sharon Hasabella in Queensland, there's quite a few that are doing really, really well. Cool. Can I squeeze in another question? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Um, just, just on that one, um, I guess IT, um, I have a business already, and you know, I know that there are a few moving uh, parts to it. And uh, I'm more likely to get complaint in IT. Um, so. When we get complaints, you know, I guess there's a logic about complaints, six complaints or four complaints? Uh, yeah. Six months. Um, is, is, there, is there a difference between different uh, business types and gyms on, on the complaints? Uh, IT doesn't have a high, bad record of complaints. You only have 20. Yes, but <clears throat> I would think if you looked at the average star rating in them, they'd be at least as high as most divisions. We tend to get rather less complaints on what you might call white collar divisions like um, IT, bookkeeping, um, building inspections. Well, it's kind of white collar, but I mean, it's those kinds of ones tend to, tend to have relatively high ratings in, in, on the whole. <coughs> it's, not, it's not that difficult, really. You just basically satisfy the client. And, and but the criteria is the same for every division. <coughs> it's, not, it's not different. It's the same criteria across everyone. Yeah. I wouldn't say there's any division that, that's unusually likely to get complaints. I, I'd say probably cleaning gets a bit more than their share sometimes. But um, it's not... There's no, there's no obvious, there's no obvious pattern according to divisions. But I certainly don't think any reason why you should get more in IT. Absolutely not. Thank you. Thanks for your question. Okay, we've got one here, a couple here from Lucas. Where's Lucas? I think we've got Thank three you. here. So Lucas from Security. Appreciate you being with us tonight. It's an honour. Um, I've worked for a couple of co companies uh, in my life. Um, Downer, BSA. And I'm just wondering, uh, what's the um, average turnover of Jim's group? If you can share that. In terms of franchisees? <coughs> no, in, not the whole group, just for average. Oh. Well, we've got something over 4,000 franchisees. Um, as I said before, the average franchisee probably turns over 
100,000 a year. So on that basis, allowing for the fact that some people have got really huge businesses, we'd be turning over half a billion, I guess. Something like that. But Thank it's you. very difficult to know because we don't ask. Honestly, I'm, I'm, I just get that from talking to people. I don't really, we, we never actually ask what your income is. You can tell us if you want to, but <laughs> we never ask. Um, and also, how transparent can we be when we're dealing with customers? I think it's in relation to cost or something. Is it so transparent in relation to cost or? Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand what, what that means. So when the customers ask uh, about Jim's business uh, in general, um, can we share that information? Oh, in, for, well, what I just told you, yeah, well, that's all public yeah, knowledge. That's, fine. that's why that's why the rich five they wanted me to put me in the rich two fifty because they said you're turning <laughs> over a half a billion. <laughs> well, <laughs> the way our system works, most of it goes to franchisees. <coughs> most of what's left goes to franchisors, and I get this little trickle at the end. So it's a lot less than you might think based on their turnover. If I if I personally was doing a half a billion dollars worth of lawns, I'd probably make a bit more money. Excellent, thank you. We've got one here from online from Shane Reardon, which has gone, Hi Jim, having massive delays getting finance for a franchise. Do you have any plans to do finance to get people up and running quicker? Thanks, Shane. That's one online. Yes, we are looking at all kinds of options right now. We're talking to finance companies at the moment about different things. We think we can, we've got a system that can actually get 100% finance, certainly for certain divisions, um, for almost anybody, unless they've got really, really, really bad credit ratings. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be losing franchisees for finance, actually. I, I think that's, that's... It's the biggest problem we have, isn't it? It is a problem. Mm -hmm. Sometimes franchisees... Because, because, you know, if you've got a house, it's easy enough, but if you haven't got a lot of security, then it can be difficult because it's, you're going into a new business. It's actually much easier to get finance once you're in business because then you can show your figures. So there has been a bit of reluctance, but we are working on some methods. I've been talking to a couple of <coughs> different finance people over the past week about, about different ways of doing this. And we think we can actually get to the stage where we can finance most people in, or just about everybody. We know one here online from Matthew McDonald says, how's Test and Tag doing? Seems that there aren't many franchisees working in this area of work. That's from Ma Matthew McDonald online. I think we've got 199 franchisees. It's one of our biggest divisions, absolutely. It's, it's yeah. going brilliantly. Um, we're going to crack 200 very, very soon, which is a really big milestone. You get an extra placard up on the wall up there. We, if, you, if you notice what, who's up there, you get one placard if you've got 50, two for 100, and three for 200. Mm. And I think it's four for 1,000. It's four for 1,000, which, which you made that one up, yep. yeah. Yeah, we just made that one up. And Clean's going to hit that one soon. So, yeah. No. The test and tag is going very, very well. Yeah, you know what's interesting about test and tag, and this is an example. When somebody came to me with this idea of test and tag, I didn't even know there was such a business. I thought Sparky's did it, and I had no idea of the background. But what was interesting, this guy had a business that was successful, and his entire business was in Albury Wodonga. And I thought, my goodness, if Albury Wodonga can support one franchisee, how many could you put Australia wide? You could have, you know, hundreds. And what's interesting now, we've got five people working in Albury Wodonga in test mm. and tag division. So it's actually a potentially very, very, very big division. And actually it's a great division too. It's got very low attrition rate. Anybody here from Test and Tag? I didn't mention talking to anybody. It's got very low attrition rate, which is one of the, one of the best divisions from that point of view. Mm. No, that's a good point. It's a good division, the old, the old <coughs> Test and Tag. They stay around for a long time. Mm. And we've got one here from Tony Altoon who's going, I've been testing this within the Jim's IT division where if you're growing and need more employees or have projects where you need another hand, try sharing the work with your fellow franchisees. This benefits yourself and overall the area you guys are service. That's in relation to the question before. And we have one here from Harris Zane tuning in saying, it's an ex-Jim's mowing guy coming in. Uh, just saying hello, Jim from Harris Zane. And we've got one here from John. Where is John with the multiple part question here? <coughs> A couple of different ones here, which is good. Hi, Jim. Hi, um, from Antennas. Um, I'm probably just going to ask one because the other one's been answered a couple of times yeah, already. Yeah, no <laughs> uh, who is your favourite Greek god? Who is your favourite <laughs> Greek god, Jim? Well, I like um, Athena because she's the patron the goddess of Athens. And I'm a big, big, big fan of Athens. I think Athens in the 5th and early 4th century is one of the most amazing societies in the history of mankind. The kind of changes they made, the, 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 the breakthroughs. I mean, that's the foundation of philosophy, of drama. They had incredible success in architecture 
in 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 you know in history Thucydides is uh, amazing. He's still an amazingly wonderful person to read right now. Um, in so many areas, they're just such an amazing people. Their pottery their is is beautiful pottery. It was exported all over the Mediterranean world. Their artistic talents were mm. such. And this is just a few tens of thousands of people who lived in this small city, like what we now call a provincial town, just over a period of about a century. So. I have a really big thing about Athens, and um, so Athena was their patron, patron goddess, so I think that's probably where I put it. Yeah, good question, John. Anything history? Science Anything like? about history yeah. is, is, is going to get me off. I like talking <laughs> about history. I like talking about a lot of things. Oh, I know. <laughs> so thanks to everyone who wrote down questions and submitted them. We really do appreciate it. It's a great, great bunch of questions and some great answers from Jim, so thanks for doing that. So what we'll do, Jim, at the end, we always give away the prizes up here. So I know Jake and Ben, you know, have you got some questions that stood out in your mind as well? So Jake, uh, we'll give it to Jim. Which one do you want to give the Monopoly to, Jim? I like that last question. I, I knew that you'd like that one. <laughs> yes. All right, so John, if you ask the last question, you get the Monopoly, mate. So or choose. You can or choose. choose whatever Whichever you one you want. Uh, yeah. Go with that one, that's the high value. Yeah, and then we have the other books up there, boys. So, do you remember any <coughs> that stick out to you? Or? Um, I'm trying to think, the guy, the guy who was just starting out his business, I can't remember what his question was. But it, was but it was good, it was good. They're all just starting out in business, that doesn't really break up. You had a whole roof of people just starting out in business. <laughs> Tell me they're a human being. That would really that would, narrow it down. Like two legs and some eyes. Um. Well, I've got one. I'll go, I'll go Jade because I like the, the answer that Jim gave to Jade's yeah. question. So Jade, which was the, what is the best advice for a new franchisee, which a few people asked that, but Jim's answer to that was really good. So Jade, what, what would you like up here? So you've got three books, basically. Monopoly is awesome playing cards. Monop well, birthday, you, can take, you can take the birthday cake. You can't give her this book because she gets cake. that one for free. <laughs> You got that one. Well, there's a bear as well. There, you there's, take. There's, there's playing cards. There's a bear. There's Jim's book, which has a lot of stuff you, more than you ever wanted to know about me. <laughs> and that's one, that, that's one about history. And the bear as well. I think the bear's. And the bear there. as well. Have you got the bear? Which in the bear's got Jim's just not, not branded on it. So yeah. you, what did we show What did we? Dog wash. Oh, dog wash bear. Yeah, we can put a dog wash shirt on. You, you want a dog wash bear? I'll get you a dog wash bear. Cool. All right, dog wash bear. So have you thought about you two over there? What the other ones? Honestly, I don't know the one you Yeah. Ah, oh, the comment, yes, from yeah. Dogwash. Uh, yeah, I really like that. Yes, that was a good one. I Richard, yes, there, Richard, yes. we had that one flagged yeah, Richard, here. Where's yeah. Richard? What, what, would you, what would you like, mate? How many got there, sorry? Uh, we've, got the, we've got three books and they're playing cards and the, the book you, everyone gets for free, so I don't worry about that one. <laughs> but oh, these three things here, mate. So you got that one, that one, or this one? Or would, you want the cards? No problem, yeah, cool. You can get the cards yeah. or you can get a bear as well. So we've got two more <laughs> books there. Was there anything else, guys, that took you, you can remember off the top of your head? No, I Anything else, Jim, uh, that you can think of? I've got a bunch here. Do you want me to yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick yeah? yeah. one that you like. Okay, cool. Where's Jill? Jill about the regions question. That was a good question for Jill. So what yeah. would you like there, Jill? Which one would you like? Which question was that? that was uh, about the regions. How many regions do you own and manage? That's a good oh, question. Yeah, we haven't okay. had that one All before. Right. So. The green one. Fantastic. Thank you. I'll bring it up at the end if you want. Oh, you can take it now. Thanks for that one, Jill. Okay, and the last one there is biohistory. So what about biohistory, Jim? Was there anything you can think of at the top of your head? No. I, Boys? I, I tend to be focused yeah, on that. Uh, no, no, we've already done that. Are there any of your kids in Jim's kids? You've got to talk about your research in that one. So yeah, that was good. I like that question. Who said that? Front? Yes. You're and welcome to biohistory if you want it. I mean, it's not yeah, everybody's taste. Like That's all... Not. A lot awesome. of history and, and... That was a Dan Andrews one, so we had that flag as well. Yeah. So yeah, we, we absolutely. Yeah, so thanks for this, guys. So thanks for um, putting all your comments and questions and hanging around here for an hour. I know the boys started a bit early as well, so we filled 10 minutes, but thank you very much as well. And all the birthday wishes and stuff online has been really good. We do this every three to four weeks, so it'd be great to check in and let us know how you're going in the first month and we'll read out your comment and let us know what you're doing and be really good. So we do this every three to four weeks. We'll leave it there tonight. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for your time. Thanks to the boys. Thanks to Mike and thanks for hanging around for the next hour. Thank you.